and it is defined as the as a journey and religion may be the transport to get us there but essentially um the most basic definition is really um relationship with self others environment with god or whoever you consider to be a higher power cancer or end of life illnesses does break your spirituality and your wholeness because wholeness and spirituality is there to help you to fulfill specific needs what does your life mean what is what is it that you're going to do what are going to be your daily habits it provides you with psychological support um, with a group of like-minded people it could be church or it could be people who don't believe in god but they go and they they find joy and satisfaction in the environment and we're having more and more of those people so a lot of times we as um traditional christians or traditional religious people we don't seem to include those in there but those persons do exist so spiritually helps us to give us support and in the case of this lady they testify that she she had unwavering um spiritual resources it might include religion but it might not next slide what every patient wants is to have um restoration of health so that they can finish goals maybe like this lady she wanted to finish her will she probably wanted to meet with her not probably she wanted to meet with her family again um hope for her she opened she had hope so she was hoping for a cure and so maybe that didn't happen so she was hoping for time and then eventually she wanted to hope for peace and the peace meant that it didn't satisfy what the medical people were doing and because maybe she didn't find the space to do all of this so she wanted to go outside of the environment and sometimes um physicians have to that's what the chaplain comes in very important on the team or somebody who has that insight and palliative care is bringing a lot to the table compassionate care is not to fix the problem but to witness being there for the one who is suffering next slide so hope timeline um suffering and hope and the timeline usually when the, the the patient is just diagnosed they hope to be completely cured and sometimes they are in denial so they will say i'm not going to go back to the doctor i want to go to do alternative medication something um because i believe in god but with time it becomes terminal then they are asking for more time and instead of hoping for a cure they're trying to find a way to be comfortable and pain free in the case of this lady she wanted to die in a peaceful and maybe not pain free but comfortable in terms of what she wants um one of the things that we have to be careful of our hope is not to give people false hope um and with this i caution you about the persons you use as chaplains because i must in that my own profession for giving people false hope and saying you shall not die but you shall live and all kinds of other things that are not always helpful um to the patient and causes lots of devastation next slide all right so this is a recap about um spirituality it's not about denomination but it's really a time when people can get in touch with their spirituality sometimes people become stronger but there are times when people are angry this lady was not angry but a lot of times people are angry especially when they're waiting for a cure or they say god has abandoned them next slide so when a patient um is at the end of life they are coping strategies that they try to use some of them have church communities or faith group communities that help them to pray um or help to fast for them and prayer is the most widely and most well used coping strategies for all patients as we know for majority of patients but there are others fasting reading sacred writings i'm sure this lady had that done lighting of candles listening to inspirational music chanting engaging in meditation and there are other communities that do other things all right spiritual care as we know it is to practice compassionate presence so again it's not to fix it but to journey with them to find out what are their fears their hope their pains their dreams and this team did well again because the the details just the presentation um tell you that they have been doing a lot of work um so they knew what she wanted help her to write her will obtain a spiritual history they did it although there were no chaplains there because it is true that you as a nurse or a doctor can do it and later we i will show you a model that i've been using 
they are attentive. Spiritual care means your attention to all the dimensions of the patient, um, pain and what's going on with them, but also with their family. Um, and then you have to, part of what most don't do, and I include this, that we can always make sure we include a spiritual, spiritual care worker into the interdisciplinary team. Next slide. And this is just the role of a chaplain to explore meaning and purpose for the patient and family. Um, so those of us who don't have chaplains or spiritual care worker, I'd be happy to train some of them because there's a lot of work to do and to provide grief and bereavement support for families um, with serious illness or who are facing end of life issues. Next slide. And this is just a breakdown of the goal of the spiritual history is just to listen to the patient fears and hope to open up communication about how they want to be treated. So yes, this case did well to find out who she was in terms of spiritual history and strong inner resources, but maybe a little bit more exploration would she would have, it would have unearthed the reason why she wanted to leave and it could have been a softer discharge or um, more could be done from the hospital end. Help to bring compassion back to medicine, taking care of the whole individual, which includes the spiritual part of it. Help to bring dignity to medical care and to improve patient trust. So you could talk to the patient, you could talk back, you have a better understanding. And, and the, the more you talk to them, then you, you know, have a better idea about what are some of the religious or cultural practices that will impact medical decisions. Next slide. Um, sometimes we have objections or we, maybe it's not the objections, but sometimes people are not able to do spiritual history, not the chaplains, but this healthcare worker because of lack of training, lack of time, or lack of private spaces, lack of experience taking the histories. And they also have a difficulty identifying patients with spiritual issues. Um, again, I'm offering that we will have, I will do some training online uh, with some assistance so we could have some of our healthcare practitioners do this. Now this tool here, we have FICA, which a lot of people I think I know um, that we use as a spiritual assessment tool. When I worked at Hope with Dingle um, in an acute care hospital with cancer patients, um, a lot of times people could not identify, although there are some persons who are laden with religion, but there are some persons who could not understand and identify with the concepts as it comes from Christianity because they never knew it or from any kind of religion. Next slide. So what I did was to, next slide, next, what I did was to put together a spiritual assessment tool that kind of strips away the religious species so that they mention it and they bring it and then we can treat with it and to do the affirmation. So it is called a three, three C assessment tool, spiritual assessment tool. And so the doctors and the nurses, the social worker can use it too, but it's just a screening so that you can have a good idea as to what's going on. First phase, what is the crisis? Who are, what are your connections? And what is your care plan? So those are the three, first set of three. The second set is, was the com care compassionate? Was the care collaborative? Who, what are the care gates that were open? Um, so anybody can do this. They ask questions that you don't have to know a lot of things about religion. You are simply just doing a history like how you do a social history, except it is in the spiritual domain. So let us just look closely at what it means. So for each person who comes in, facing end of life or having any kind of illness for that matter, they have some kind of crisis or issue, spiritual crisis, isolation, fear, grief, loss of faith. We have set, met them. Then you want to find out from them who are their connections. This lady had a husband who all the relationship was strained. Now a sister, you know, she had her two friends who were in the community who, well, who became her friends um, through um, church connections. All right, and then the care plan, what were the practices? She said what she wanted to do. She, she said that she wanted to, um, she didn't want to comply with more, more adding more morphine. So that's the care plan. So when you do this, you're asking a, a series of questions or unearthing answers from them in terms of how they want to be treated, who are the connections so you know who to connect and what are the crises that they have. That can give you a lot of information as you're working with, with the patient. Next slide. And the second slide is for the patient to ask, but is also for you to ask, 
it's, an, it's, it's almost like an assessment piece. Um, what I did, was it compassionate? Was it done with dignity? Did I communicate? Was it sensitive? Did I show care? Um, was it collaborative? Who were my referrals? Who did I consult? In this case, they consulted family. They had family meetings. They had friends. They even spoke to the herbalist assistant because of the concern that they had. So if you're able to do something like this, then I believe it's a good tool. And I will all, I, I know based on using it that along the way, all the persons who have um, religious background or strong religious belief, they will always bring up God or whoever they consider is a higher power. And then the care gates. So she had hope, she had hope for care. She had partnership with um, family members. She had partnership with her friends. So I invite you to use this tool. Um, most people find it fairly easy to work with. Um, and it also is not judgmental because a lot of people are not practicing Christians and sometimes they feel timid in working with you because um, all the religious covering that there is. So for suffering and hope, um, people at the end of life really do go through a lot. And it is always very important to explore the spiritual connection in these cases so that you're doing a holistic care for the patient and the family. Thank you.